A city surrounded by water and mountains, Vancouver really is beautiful. Vancouver is the place to see. Vancouver is a coastal seaport in British Columbia and is the third largest city within Canada. As you drive around, it's hard not to fall in love with the giant trees and green spaces, the awesome cafes and restaurants and the unique buzz of energy in the air. With all four seasons throughout the year giving you a plethora of things to see and do, you'll never find yourselves wondering what to do next. Vancouver has something for everyone. To help you plan an amazing trip, here are our tips on 10 awesome things you absolutely must do in Vancouver. But, before we start, make sure you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for the latest upcoming travel videos. Number 10. Grouse Mountain Towering over North Vancouver, Grouse Mountain has been a popular outdoor getaway for years, especially since the views from the summit span the entire city on a clear day. Originally used only for skiing, Grouse now offers year-round activities, including the Grouse Grind, a nearly two-mile trail often referred to by residents as Mother Nature's Stairmaster. During the winter, a favorite time for locals, you'll have a bevy of activities to occupy your time. Grouse Mountain slopes boast 33 ski and snowboard runs, four chairlifts and six terrain parks, not to mention four snowshoeing trails. There's also a zip line, a skating pond, a high-definition cinema, a wildlife refuge and several eateries, including a Starbucks and the observatory, a formal dining room with 360-degree mountaintop views. Many past visitors raved about the excellent food at the top. There are two ways to reach the top, you can break a sweat on the grouse grind or enjoy a scenic ride on the Skyride Gondola. Number 9. Queen Elizabeth Park Attracting more than 6 million visitors a year, Queen Elizabeth Park is one of Vancouver's most popular outdoor spaces. Spread out across nearly 130 acres, the park features a rose garden, a meticulously manicured quarry garden, and an arboretum with about 1,500 native and exotic trees. When you're not admiring the park's flora, head inside the Bloedel Conservatory to visit the fauna. The conservatory features more than 120 free-flying exotic birds, not to mention 500 tropical plants and three different climate zones. Step outside the conservatory and you'll spot the Dancing Waters Fountain display, along with several sculptures scattered throughout the plaza. Since the park sits at the highest point in Vancouver, it offers spectacular views of the city skyline, mountains and shoreline from the Fountain Plaza. Many visitors say it has the best views of the city you can find and the grounds are well maintained. Number 8. Kitsilano Beach When the weather's nice, follow Vancouverites down to the shores of English Bay to Kitsilano Kits Beach, often compared to La S. Venice Beach. This shoreline along the northern edge of Kitsilano is the city's most popular swim spot, especially for the city's 20-something crowd. When you're not relaxing on the sand or admiring the skyline views, you'll find areas for inline skating and volleyball, along with tennis courts and a playground. Visitors do warn that the beach can get quite busy in summer, but it is clean and always has good vibes. If you're in the mood for swim but the bay water is just a little too chilly for your liking, try the area's heated. Saltwater Kitsilano Pool. You can also visit the nearby Vancouver Maritime Museum, which offers an educational respite from the summer sun. When you need to grab a refreshment, you'll find several concession stands as well as a more formal dining room at the Boathouse Restaurant on Kitts Beach. Number 7. Vancouver Lookout Some travelers say the Vancouver Lookout should be your first sightseeing stop. From the panoramic observation deck, you can enjoy a 360-degree view of the city below, including the North Shore and Olympic Peninsula Mountains, as well as the sprawling Stanley Park. Sitting on the 55th floor of the Harbor Center building in downtown Vancouver, the lookout is reached via a glass elevator, where the 40-second ride takes visitors up more than 550 feet to the top. Make the most of the spectacular vantage point by visiting on a clear day, Recent visitors said you won't get your money's worth if there's cloud cover. The Vancouver Lookout is open daily, with seasonal summer and winter hours. From October to May, it welcomes visitors from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. From May to October, it's open from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Consult the Lookout's website for specific opening and closing times. Admission, which includes free guided tours, is valid throughout the day and evening. Recent travelers advise taking advantage of this day-long admission by returning for sunset viewing. Number 6. 
Capilano Suspension Bridge. Overcome your vertigo and experience Vancouver the way the birds do. The Capilano Suspension Bridge is the oldest tourist attraction in the city, and the 450 feet long, 230 feet high bridge offers spectacular views of the Capilano River below. Visitors call it thrilling, exciting, and an overall great experience. The fun doesn't end once you reach the other side of the canyon. More suspension bridges and daredevil activities await at the treetops adventure. With this canopy walk, set among the park's 250-year-old Douglas fir trees, you'll have the chance to walk 110 feet above the forest floor, from viewing platform to viewing platform. Continue to tempt fate along the cliff walk, a set of cantilevered and suspended walkways that meander along the canyon's edge. Though recent travelers praise the unique experience the attraction offers, visitors aren't as pleased with the high admission price or the limited parking. To avoid the school crowds, plan your visit in the morning and to sidestep parking woes, sign up for a guided tour to the attraction, which leaves from Vancouver. Dangling high above North Vancouver, the Capilano Suspension Bridge is open daily, hours vary seasonally. Number 5. Yaletown. Vancouver's definitive late-night hotspot, Yaletown has steadily increased in popularity since it transformed from a warehouse district to the trendy area it is today. Often compared to New York City's Soho neighborhood, Yaletown features chic boutiques, restaurants and hotels. Even if you don't plan to hang your hat at Opus, you should still plan to check out the hotel's cocktail lounge of the same name. Other top nightlife spots include Yaletown Brewing Co. Pierre's Lounge and Bar None. Recent visitors say there is something for everyone there, with a wide range of dining and drinking options in a variety of prices. For a little help navigating the neighborhood, consider signing up for one of the best Vancouver tours. You'll find Yaletown in downtown Vancouver, about two miles southeast of Stanley Park. If you don't have your own set of wheels, you can get to Yaletown via the Canada Line Sky Train, take the train to the Yaletown Roundhouse Station. Several buses also service the area. Number 4. Granville Island. This former industrial site is now one of Vancouver's most beloved neighborhoods. Practically its own mini-city, Granville Island's former factories now house trendy restaurants, galleries, and theaters. But the main draw here is the Granville Island Public Market, often described as one of the best open-air markets in North America. Among the seemingly endless aisles of fresh produce and local crafts, you'll find a variety of food stalls selling everything from baked goods to ethnic snacks. If the weather is nice, try and grab a seat outside by the water. You can watch ferry boats put her back and forth in English Bay while enjoying the performances of the buskers who regularly play for market crowds. After filling up on market eats, head to the perpetually busy kids market. This Playtopia sells toys and crafts and features an indoor play area. If you don't have kids in tow, visit Canada's first microbrewery, Granville Island Brewing. You can enjoy daily tours and tastings in the taproom. Visitors call the island lively, colorful and a great place to shop for both gifts and food. Many also recommended experiencing the market with a tour guide to make the most of your time here. Number 3. Van Dusen Botanical Garden Often described by travelers as a hidden gem, the Van Dusen Botanical Garden is spread across 55 acres in the center of Vancouver. Recent visitors called the garden very peaceful. The garden features several sections, including a stone garden and a hedge maze, a favorite among past visitors. But perhaps the most popular feature of Van Dusen is the Labyrinth Walk, described on the garden's website as the most photographed area of its 55 acres. The path is made memorable by the yellow, chain-like blooms that hang from the labyrinth branches. Peak bloom for these plants occurs in mid-May but if you're not in Vancouver during their prime blooming period, check out what will be in season during your visit with this bloom calendar here. You can explore all of the garden's meandering paths with a self-guided tour. Pamphlets are available at the garden information desk. If all that walking makes you hungry, refuel at the two eateries located on site, the Shaughnessy Restaurant and the Truffles Cafe. Number 2. Vancouver Aquarium Those in the know say the Vancouver Aquarium is definitely worth exploring, whether you're traveling with kids or just looking for a little extra marine knowledge. As the home of more than 50,000 different animals belonging to 734 different species, 
This is a great place to become acquainted with local animals, as well as exotic creatures. But don't come here expecting SeaWorld. Past visitors say the aquarium's focus is more on interactive exhibits and education and less on choreographed animal performances. Different exhibits mimic various habitats, from the icy tanks of the Canada's Arctic exhibit to the colorful clownfish, an intimidating black tip reef shark sheltered in the tropic zone. Don't miss the Graham Amazon Gallery, a giant atrium where three toad sloths and stunning tree frogs take shelter from the hourly simulated rainstorms. While some recent visitors comment on the steep cost of admission, they also say that if you schedule enough time, it's worth the price. For a little extra, you can tag along for a behind-the-scenes tour of the aquarium. Number 1. Stanley Park Get back to nature and enjoy a day at Stanley Park. There are so many sights to see when visiting this urban park within downtown Vancouver. You'll probably need at least half a day or even a full day to explore the park. One of the most popular things to do while visiting Stanley Park is taking a stroll, run, or bike ride along the 9km seawall that surrounds the park. Along the way, there are many highlights to look for. Brockton Point Lighthouse, Girl in a Wetsuit, Siwash Rock, Lumberman's Arch, as well as the beaches. Inside the park, there is an abundance of trails to explore. You could grab a 15-minute ride on the Stanley Park train, or maybe you love the arts or culture scene. Take your time to marvel at the beauty of the First Nations art and totem poles. Or you might like to visit the local artists and their paintings along the walkways. After taking the time to explore the park, why not grab a bite to eat at the various options throughout the park? The Tea House Restaurant, Prospect Point Cafe, Stanley Park Pavilion, and various concession stands. 